Hello everyone, like uh, it's nice to uh, talk to you again. Today we are going to talk about the fourth lecture from my DAS GTS NX, the geotechnical course with uh, application uh, in, uh, using finite element my DAS GTS NX. In this lecture, it's a very interesting lecture and very important because we are going to tackle a new uh, problem uh, in numerical modeling which is applying the interface. So, what is the interface? This is a very important question. Interface is uh, the interface behavior model was developed to simulate the boundary behavior between the same or the different material. So, if we have a material and mat another material, we have to start to add a different material between them to simulate the interaction and the contact between those two materials. And this is very important uh, parameter we have to include in all our finite element model, which is improving uh, the computational uh, solution and as well as it consider uh, more realistic uh, to our uh, answer. The interface behavior model is based on Coulomb law or friction uh, which developed in 1785 and follows assumptions that the frictional force of an interface is proportional to the coefficient of uh, friction and the confining for, uh, forces perpendicular to the normal direction acting on the interface. So, if we have a two uh, material, but one material, for example, is concrete and the other material is soil, so when we start to study the soil structure interaction between both material, we will have to add another material which simulates the transition between a material to another because there will be some loosening in the soil which has different parameters so its parameter will be like reduced and this uh, parameter depend on more coulomb friction model and uh, it's pretty easy to uh, in uh, my dad's gts and x to simulate the interface uh, and it has different ways. There is some ways to in, uh, do interface uh, either between two materials and when we start to talk about piles we will talk uh, uh, explicitly about piles when we come to talk about uh, that in the further lecture. So the parameter is an important parameter to uh, uh, define an interface is the normal stiff no modulus, just the shear stiff modulus, and the cohesion friction angle, and dilancy angle, and tensile stress, and so on. So in order to understand everything here, we will go to here. The interface material can be defined using uh, some equations. We will see those equations in a second. Using the stiffness of the adjacent element and nonlinear parameter, yeah, depending on the stiffness which simulates the elastic behavior of uh, the material it comes from, the stiffness and the nonlinear parameter it comes from, like the modulus, of, uh, like uh, the cohesion and the friction angle, and this is Coulomb model. The virtual thickness, which simulate the transition zone or the thickness between the two material, and the strength reduction factor is applied. The strength reduction factor is the factor which uh, like uh, reduce the nonlinear parameter to, uh, due to the softening of soil in between the um, both material. Soil structure interaction is a very hot topic and it has a lot of uh, research going on right now to understand the real behavior uh, for the soil structure interaction. Interface material stiffness and parameter are applied differently according to the relative stiffness difference between nipporing ground and structure member. We already understand this point. So if we have a retaining wall here and this retaining wall has um, uh, has uh, concrete material and this is the soil here. So when we start to apply this uh, into our 
model, we have to add an interface between this material and this material. This interface will have a specific stiffness uh, modulus, uh, both in shear and uh, normal direction, and it will have nonlinear parameter reduced to with factor call, uh, we call it R, and the thickness of this layer virtually we call it TV, and. Uh, TV and uh, it has one uh, like we can see that it could have like 10 centimeters thickness. In order to be able to calculate this uh, interface parameter, we can go through this equation. And now we need to focus uh, because this requires a lot of concentration to be able to apply this. The normal stiffness modulus, as we can see here, Kn is equal to the modulus of elasticity uh, from the odometer, or the initial modulus of elasticity from the odometer. We still remember that the curve between uh, stress-strain relationship at the, the elastic part of, or the linear elastic part of the curve, uh, we can calculate the gra uh, the grade or the slope of this curve, uh, of this line, and this simulate uh, like this represents the modulus of elasticity in odometer test. TV is the virtual thickness, we will know exactly how we can calculate it, and shear stiffness modulus is the uh, GI is the same thing with, with the relation between the shear stress and shear strain uh, in the elastic part over the a virtual thickness. So CI is uh, cohesion for the interface is uh, C of soil uh, multiplied to factor called R and uh, phi here it's tan inverse R uh, cross uh, tan uh, phi of soil. So here how we can calculate E odometer we can calculate E in the odometer uh, test initial equal to uh, cross G interface uh, G int uh, interface uh, cross 1 minus new interface over 1 minus 2 cross new interface how we can calculate G interface it's uh, it's, uh, it's equal R interface product shear strength of soil shear strength modulus of soil uh, in general, tap whole. Okay, how we can calculate G? We calculate G if we still remember from the second lecture when we were talking about the isotropic material and this big stiffness uh, matrix. Uh, uh, stiffness matrix we can calculate it from E, which is the modulus velocity of the soil, and divided by two uh, pro, uh, cross one plus new uh, soil. So here just to recap that the new uh, I is the interface Poisson ratio. The interface is used to simulate the non-compressive friction behavior and autom uh, automatically calculate the uh, calculate to prevent any numerical error. So adding the uh, interface will always improve our solution. Of course, the number of or the time, uh, computational time of uh, our problem will increase, but it will prevent a lot of uh, uh, prevent a lot of numerical errors. TV equal uh, virtual thickness and generally has a value between 0.01 and 0.1. The higher the stiffness. Uh, difference between ground and structure, the smaller the value. So if the stiffness between uh, the two material is very high, like a material is concrete and the other material is a stiff uh, rock. So there is will not be loosening in the soil at this time, so we can just add this value. But if the material is... Uh, if the material is... Um, uh, this stiff, uh, uh, difference is large between two materials like clay and uh, concrete, so we just increase the stiffness to be 0.1. And this is extremely important when we start to talk about this material. We have to know how to simulate, how to calculate this parameter to include them in our uh, interface parameter. 
we have to understand that if there is our multiple soil here we have to add an interface for each one we will see how we can do this automatically but now we just need to understand how can my dash gts and x calculate the interface parameter this could be extremely hard to do uh, manually so let's go back here and see for the interface dilency angle the same angle can be applied at the ground when the ground is under rigid body motion uh, without strength reduction or equal one when considering strength re re reduction entering zero is general definition for rigid body motion so if we want to simulate a rigid body motion we just add it to be zero so R, we agreed that R in the interface is a reduction value for the nonlinear parameter. So how we can apply this between the uh, uh, new boring structure member and the ground? If the uh, interface between uh, sand and uh, steel, we use reduction between 0.6 to 0.7 and it fits between uh, clay and uh, st steel we take it as 0 0.5 and if it's sand concrete we take it R between 1 to 0 0.8 and if it's clay and concrete we take it between 1 and 0 0.7 so in general it's almost here half and almost here 0.7 uh, 7.75 so this is the value of the reduction factor we will obtain there is always an automatic way to calculate the interface because it's hard like if we have a multiple layer let's like say 10 layers beside a uh, structure it's hard to calculate this individually and add it to the software this way that's why my dad's gts in x provide a simplified way because uh, it's uh, code has this um, uh, it has a code to calculate the uh, virtual uh, uh, to calculate this parameter depending on the virtual thickness and the strength reduction factor uh because if we went back here to this equation we will find it's all depend on the tv and r so we need just to cal to add this value the virtual thickness of 10 centimeters and the reduction factor if it's gonna be one or if it's gonna be less finally here bef uh, the interface between two bodies it can be simulated as we can see here we select the meshing and we just create uh, a 3D interface as we can see here. It's an element between two elements. And in 2D we can see that there is a line interface which simulate uh, the, the transition zone between uh, this blue uh, element and green element. So this is how we can uh, talk about interface. It's important to simulate interface. It's important to add it. It's important to add its parameter. But let's say we will add uh, our parameter individually. You can do this through writing an Excel sheet and you just add your model's velocity, reduction factor, Poisson ratio for soil, Poisson ratio for interface, uh, virtual thickness, uh, cohesion friction angle and now he can calculate the uh, soil uh, shear modulus and interface shear modulus and odometer shear modulus and through here we can just calculate these values here and we can it directly to the software and we can add uh, C interface and phi interface if we went through this equation, we can find that the software is suggesting 0.45 as a Poisson issue for the interface. And this is a very easy way, like you just can make your script or your uh, sheet, uh, Excel sheet and you can calculate it very easily. 
For dilation angle, there is dilation angle uh, depend mainly on uh, the shape of the particles. It depends on the fine, uh, the percentage of uh, or the type of the fine. Uh, the shape of the particles, if the shape is spheric or angular. So if it's uh, uh, as uh, uh, spheric we can start to add different parameter and if it's uh, like it depends on d10 d10 is uh, passing from sieve number 10 in the sieve analysis test cu is a uniformity coefficient relative density so relative density is very important and it defines uh, uh, it defines the uh, dilancy angle so it's very important to include it in your calculation uh, when you are calculating your dilancy angle and depending on the type of the fines inside the, the material, if it's quartz or mica or other, so we start to define these factors and eventually we come up with the mean the principal stress. Uh, then we start to calculate friction angle in compression vertically, then we calculate it in tension, and from that we can calculate psi, which is uh, uh, which is the uh, uh, angle of an uh, uh, dilancy angle. The, as we can see here, we can get this information and we can build our uh, Excel sheet to calculate the dilancy angle. We can see here in this figure that uh, drained uh, friction angle uh, equal uh, this equation and you follow this parameters here as we go forward and you finally reach to this point where you can just calculate depending on the friction angle in tension and compression we can just calculate the psi here this is another excel sheet which can calculate the is the lateral earth pressure at rest uh, from different theories and for different material so if our material here if we know the friction angle if we know the vertical elasticity horizontal elasticity was on ratio and even if we have uh, the slope of the landfill is uh, it has a slope and uh, over consolidated the uh, ratio and other we start to can calculate the that from different uh, series so we can say uh, see that different series calculate the lateral air pressure uh, in different um, ways as we can see here depending on this parameter we can see that there is uh, for an isotropy clay we can find that there are suggested uh, uh, equations and for back if we have a backfill with angle slope backfill we can use this theory and even for soft clay there are suggested another equations for soft clay as we can see here depending on the uh, water content depending on the liquid limit and the plastic limit and over consolidation uh, consolidated ratio we can create the plastic uh, the plasticity and uh, index and the liquidity index then for soft clay we can calculate the angle like the at rest air pressure from different series and for normally consolidated clay we can calculate it as well and for over consolidated clay we can calculate it and even do you remember when we were talking about the CBT test and it has a lot of correlation uh, we can use its data to calculate uh, to calculate uh, to, cal uh, to calculate the at rest air pressure. So, after we talk about uh, after this introduction, we can understand uh, that the interface is simulating uh, simulating uh, two materials together. We have to include two main parameters to calculate the interface. First thing is the uh, virtual thickness, which simulate. Uh, the interface between the two materials the interface between the two materials uh, the uh, interface between the two mat the interface between the two materials has this virtual thickness and it depends the thickness depend on the stiffness or the relative stiffness between the soil and the structure if it's big so we can use a larger 
uh, virtual thickness if the stiff is the difference in stiffness is small we use uh, smaller uh, smaller one uh, the reduction factor is used to reduce the nonlinear parameter like the C and the Phi and the uh, dilency angle we can uh, use the rigid motion by including it to be zero and uh, finally you can develop your own excel sheet which you can use it to include all different parameter we'll start to see this in problems right away now we are going to create our model so fast so we create 2d model as we can see we will go to import our model from dxf If we remember here, we can see this is our model. We say apply and we say cancel. And we go now to create faces. So we select those things and we say apply. We select this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and we say apply. And finally, we just choose these things and we say apply now we create all our model we go here we delete this one we don't need it anymore so now we just have three surfaces and all we need to do is we go to imprint curves select all auto imprint as uh, curves select all tools select all and we say apply we can make also auto connect select everything but mainly it happened with 3d so it's not important here then we go to mesh and we go to material we say import from different model so we will get those materials here okay even we remember that we don't need this we can just import properties one time so we go to property we can import it from here and it will come with the material as we can see here and we start to add to make meshing but before this we can make create control seeds this one and we make it as 0.25 apply and this one and this one 0.5 apply and now we start to mesh to the 0.25 for this wall and we say wall and back fell back fell and we're gonna make the size of the back fell as 0.5 We choose the property to be backfill and we say apply and last thing here we're gonna make it base and we choose the original soil and apply now we can see this is gonna be like our model we can go now to create uh, the interface so from interface here we start to create line interface because it's 2d so we go to from nodes and let's try another trial first without interface and with interface so we will go to static self weight and we are going to call it gravity so the model just crashed so let's save it I made a very fast model again 
we save it and now we go to static slope self weight we call it gravity and then we go to line load we add 10 kba here as a pressure but we add it in life load 10 kba apply select apply cancel and we start to add here um, after this we can start to add boundary conditions we go to O2 apply and we are done with our model we go now to analysis now we just covered this stuff before we just revising very fast so we add here is a base we call it initial and boundary condition save clear displacement and new we're gonna make it wall save next backfill we make it backfill save new life loot and we we'll make it life loot save and close we simulate this very fast wall back fill and life loot and finally we add analysis from construction stage we we'll call it run one and we say uh, automatic and initial uh, condition comes from initial stage and k node we will talk about this in later videos and we will start to run our analysis you see by practicing you will be able to run your model very fast no problems at all we see the displacement here and as we can see here on the format displacement like if we have uh, if we have here the Uh, the wall itself this is the shape of this is a shape of uh, of our model like we can change this to be like this we don't have anything so let's do a cutting uh, diagram beneath this one here and we make it in y direction so we can see let's reverse set so this will be the distribution of stress from the weight beneath the beneath this uh, wall so here it's like this so so the value of stresses is is very small so let's go to revise the material so it's okay the weight is fine the weight is fine and it has it's okay like it has no problem here the gamma is okay gamma is okay no problem and here is okay so it seems that the weight of the of this problem is very small we show again the stresses vertical stress as we can see yeah it's we were showing displacement soy so it was okay it was just it wasn't uh, just convenient like if we went back here again we can go to diagram and we edit it and reverse it and we say apply apply
and we say apply as we can see here so this is the displacement sorry and uh, in millimeter so by increasing this we can see there is a dramatic increase in the displacement here in millimeter like 3.9 uh, product 10 minus 2 by adding the life fluid we can see that displacement is increasing so we can start to see this is the displacement and this is the behavior of the uh, of the retaining wall so we'll start to see the stresses s y y and we'll have it continuous as we can see here we can just uh, uh, release this and we can see that the development of the development of stresses here you can play with the results for representation and and the form and wire <coughs> at the same time deform it and so on so you can just show it like this we can see the deformation of of our structure and we can see this is uh, increasing in stress in in meter it's gonna be like 90 to 150 which makes sense so this is the way of we represent our model as we can see here so let's see how we can just add the interface very fast we go to meshing and we go to interface so from interface we choose line interface and when you choose from line interface you can see different values here from element boundary from uh, manual node from convert element from free edges from trust beam trust beam we'll talk about this later and shell and plan we will see them in 3d so here if you have like a properties as we say like if we went back here and material and if you came here and you said interface and pile so you start to add the normal stiffness modulus and you can calculate everything from here uh, from interface and you start to add it one by one but instead we are not gonna go uh, go it like this if we went to wizard here it will start to tell you as we said the important thing is the virtual thickness and the reduction factor we can assume this reduction factor is 0.7 and we say ok and we create we choose uh, we're gonna choose the line interface here and let's see what is the effect of the interface if we added it in, in at the base and we say apply if we started to choose here as nodes and we come here and we will find they are one node but if you just started to see this node for example you're gonna find they are count node because he splitted these two elements away from each other and he added another element with this uh, parameters with the new parameter uh, in between <laughs> So this is uh, inter how you can define the interface and if you came here you will find this is the interface values and this is the general uh, normal stiffness values of the interface and uh, here if we went back to material we can find that these are uh, our material here and for silty sand it's more column and we just brought this material and we just work on them this is the interface more column you can just add it as if you want and modify this let's say we're gonna make the cohesion zero 
or 0.2 and we'll make the friction angle to be uh, 20 but because it's less than 20 he didn't include it so let's say ok and close and we just run uh, we go to analysis now properties of course he added here the interface as well and you're gonna find it in the meshing part over here if we went to meshing and we can see that we can view our uh, interface over here so we will go here and we'll go to construction stages because we have to add it uh, here at wall interface and we have to add this line interface and close we start to run our model and and there was failure and it comes from um, from this error so if we went back here and we modified this to go back to none and we say close we run it again yeah so it's a problem came from the non-linearity of the interface we shouldn't include it here because of the value of the angle of friction is small now if we want went back here to find the displacement we can see that this is the value of the displacement this is the pulp of uh, bulb here and we can see this is the increasement of the stresses uh, of the displacement you can show the value of the stresses we can start to add another uh, interface values here we can add another interface at this side we can choose between uh, from those and those and we can see and wizard 0.7 ok and we see here he started to put our interface and we say apply we select it again we view it now that's wrong um, here we view it again and we call it interface 2 and we come here wizard 7 ok and apply now we have our interface as we can see here we go now to analysis back fill and we start to add interface 2 close we can see here it added another interface 1 and interface 2 and we start to run our analysis and no warning so we show the displacement here from the interface and you start to make comparison between with interface and without interface now and after you take this this is there is no values here for stresses and we can take the values of this diagram show table and this is the values you can take it this one and this one and you can just copy it and go to excel and you start to draw it and arrange all your data and finalize your work so this is something 
we can do it with this software and now we know exactly how we can apply an interface so this is regarding interface in this model we will start to look at our second problem uh, which we mentioned last time to see how it's gonna go here if we looked for one last thing you can find that interface here has some results interface stresses the normal and uh, the tangential and tangential in the direction and you can see your results and apply it to your work so let's see the other model we are not gonna build it we just gonna modify it if we came here and we started to remember our last model um, Lecture 3 Do you remember this one? This was uh, cantilever with one uh, with just one uh, strut and this is with two struts so we will do this again with considering no struts here we will come here and we will delete all the struts it was boundary condition so we're gonna, gonna keep them but we're gonna apply struts or no strut so how we can do interface for the sheet pile here so we go to mesh we open the run we go to interface and we are going to do line interface we are going to do here line interface now uh, from element boundary we are going to do this like this we go to meshing sheet pile interface and we say we come here and uh, after we choose the uh, pile from element boundary this is another way we go here and we say we want to reduce it to 0 0.7 and we say OK and if we did it like this we can just say he failed so we can do it from oh yeah I agree do you remember when I said that we are going to use trust or element so we can do it from trust or element now so if when we choose this one he will ask you to do something here it's very important to notice what I'm going right now first thing I will go here and I will start to reduce it wizard to 0 0.7 and virtual thickness 0 0.1 the construction stage here is very important because first thing we will have our soil then we will add our by a sheet pile then we will start to dredge this one, then this one, then this layer. But first of all, when we start to build our uh, initial model, and uh, we created interface. So what will happen? There will be at the first stage or the initial stage, there will be two nodes here, which they are not connected together. And this is considered like a numerical error. That's not correct. So how we can uh, how we can solve this problem this is very important and you have to understand the construction stages for creating this model so first thing as I said again when I create the interface here 
there will be at the initial stage there will uh, there uh, this uh, this mo uh, this node will be two nodes and they they are they are going to be separated from each other and that's not correct so we have to add at the initial stage before we add the pile we have to add another element uh, which represent the connection between this side and this side until we add this pile and the interface then we can remove this element so we call this rigid link so we create a rigid link between this side and this side until we add the interface and the sheet pile so we are going to call it interface and we created our rigid link and uh, we're gonna say apply now we created our interface so so if we so this here if we like deactivated every all the layers and we activated our uh, problem so this is the rigid link and this is the interface element so as we can see here the rigid link it will connect all this layer together so if this is the top sand let's say top sand in the other uh, in the other side uh, top sand right as we can see here we need some rigid element to connect this until we add the interface but let's come here and we go to let's forget that we added this rigid link and we go to uh, analysis and we go to here and we go to edit so now we will add here the interface element so uh, the interface uh, yes the interface element so we say save and we start to run and let's see what's gonna happen in this run so let's clear this and let's run our model so we can see that if we started to view the results here in the initial stage for example the stresses it will be zero but let's see the stresses so there is a problem here that's not logic so we have to add sometimes you will have your model will not run at all because this is separated like if we came here now like and if you choose node and if we choose this node they are three nodes how come they are three nodes it's one node from this element one node from this element and one node from the rigid uh, link if we uh, deactivated this and we select again they are the three element as I said so the right solution here is to go to edit and we start to add the rigid link here at the beginning and we say save then we go here and we start to deactivate now the rigid link because we already have our interface now and say save and close now we already have our uh, our model like this let's go here and simulate it so start like this then we add the interface and the rigid link and the other soil we deactivate first one deactivate second third and finally we add the life load so we start to run our model and see so we go now here and we start to see our forces You see now, this, this there was a problem here, guys. Do you remember it next time, last time, because they weren't matching together? Do you remember this? It's very important. That's why you have to include the rigid link when you are doing your model. So now let's start to see the results from other and we we always care about the beam moment as we can see here we will go here 
and this is the case of uh, two struts so we haven't changed anything yet but let's start first with the case of no strut so we we'll go to analysis like a second lever case um, so we go to the initial edit first strut will deactivate it top strut we don't want the top strut save the bottom strut we don't need it and we say save close and we will start to run our model as we can see here our model start to suffer from the running because of the reality of the interface itself now uh, as we can see it's it doesn't become easy like when it was rigid but we have to include it this way because this is more realistic i'm just going to boost uh, the running until it's done and i will like view the results we can see here that the cantilever case become more uh, like become uh, uh, very hard and the displacement here become like almost half meter so and that's not uh, that's not good like we can see that our sheet pile is not stable enough we have to increase the stiffness and we have to increase everything so that's not stable so let's just see the results of uh, the deformation here and the mini moment so we will just take this all off and we have our sheet pile here and let's go when we included the interface what will be how was the how is the result so you remember what we were doing we will go here and we will choose uh, beam element uh, forces and moment in y direction and node element and we choose our sheet pile and we filter it in y or and we say close and uh, we want it from the last case and we go to our excel and we copy it and let's say we will add now uh, we will add now select data add in x direction and in y direction we see guys here this is the difference between having interface and no interface we can see that interface simulate the reality of the situation and we have to include it because the moments will increase because of this so now we can see the maximum moment for the cantilever case it's 260 however and in, without including and uh, the rigidity it's 205 kilonewton meter so let's consider one strut let's consider one strut uh, we will go here analysis and we will go to uh, initial uh, initial we'll go sorry we'll go to uh, dredging one and we will include the top strut here and we say save and close and we will run it again we will see that the model will not suffer in running like last time you see it just run very fast and now we can see the results and beam and before this we can show the total displacement it was half meter uh, there so right now we can see it. we can see it has decreased dramatically and we can see now the beam for, uh, uh, forces and we see yeah it decreases but we will see the effect of the interface comparing to the other case we will extract here the results forces from y and we want it from the last one 
and we are choosing all the element here and filter this and table and table and we will take it to our Excel and we will include this here select data add x y okay okay we can see here the effect of the interface as well it increases the moment a bit here from uh, uh, almost 60 to and it was here like if we increase this now it was here 45 and here the maximum moment in the other direction was 150 here it's uh, 160 so we can see now the effect of the interface last run we're gonna do it here it's all about if we added two struts let's see the effect add ridging 2 we'll start to add the last strut the last strut uh, bottom strut here and we say save and close and we're gonna run this model but we can see that adding strut and the effect has decreased with including uh, interface not like the cantilever case so we will extract select all beam forces all y and this is node this is y gonna filter them like this and let's see the data we go to excel last data we are gonna add here we select data add in x and in y and we say okay okay so we can see that the green one here has the, has the other effect so this is uh, here almost 110 and here it's almost 41 42 so we can see now the conclusion that the effect of the interface on our on our model can increase the moment and can increase the shear force and can increase other straining actions that's why it's very important to include the interface we see the interface here uh, as we can see its effect on the shear and let's see uh, the total stresses now and the displacement we can see that displacement in x direction at the top of the sheet pile it's like very small like half me a half millimeter and at the bottom here it's almost small as well like four millimeter and uh, so this is the effect of and we can see here this is more realistic like the pulp of the stresses and in z in y direction so this is the distribution of stresses like uh, let's see the total settlement of the pile of the sheet pile will be almost two millimeters and regarding the stresses Uh, plan stresses s y y we can see uh, the arrangement here and we can make it continuous to see the effect of the stresses in different cases we can see here the continuity due to the rigid uh, link so here it's very important 
to compare between the uh, uh, rigid link and no rigid link and it's very important to compare between including uh, including interface and doesn't include interface because it really has a very big effect when we uh, calculating our model that's why we have to take this into account uh, when we are modeling our uh, problems so now in this uh, part of the lecture we are going to include uh, we're going to include uh, another uh, way to add a strut which is uh, a throw block uh, back here which pull the uh, pull the sheet pile and we will compare it with one strut to see the difference if we adding a block comparing to just fixing it uh, throw boundary condition to see this effect uh, this case it's very common in marines so this can consider like a to do uh, 2d uh, finite element analysis for like a sheet pile in marines now we will start to uh, model uh, the concrete block behind here and instead of using the uh, instead of using this uh, boundary condition so we will go to model here and we will go to the geometry and we're gonna show to the meshing and we're gonna show here the top and the bottom strut we will just we're gonna this, uh, take this off and we will show it by property as we can see here so we will consider that we will have a concrete uh, uh, block here so uh, at this area and the size of the concrete block let's say it's going to be one meter by one meter and it's going to be away from the sheet pile so if we to know exactly how uh, how we deal with the concrete block it has to be out of the uh, it has to be out uh, out of the uh, failure criterion if we may uh, like if we draw a line here at angle equal the active air sub pressure so it should be out and if we open like project as principle of foundation engineering uh, book we can see that if we have a, a sheet pile here and we can see that uh, if we draw a line here with the angle of uh, active air sub pressure and uh, then we draw our perpendicular uh, line over this one so the anchor plate or anything should be out of this uh, criterion so you have to be able to define the length of the, the anchor and uh, the place of the block you have to do it this way you draw a line which represent five, uh, 45 degrees plus uh, angle of internal flexion over two and you draw a perpendicular line over it and the uh, depths of the uh, of the anchor uh, should be above the water table and it has to be away uh, out of the failure, uh, fa fa failure zone as we can see it uh, in this uh, graph and if we are doing this with uh, uh, grouting uh, this way so we ha it has to be out uh, here so that's very important to include it uh, when you are doing uh, this part in uh, uh, in modeling and designing the groundwater table as we can see it here as well that's very important to include in your model when you are doing this and to know where exactly is a concrete block so we will start to look here and we will start to add uh, start to add this uh, block as we can we can see here from mesh uh, we will start to extract the length of the uh, the anchor from mesh so we're gonna choose this is the length of the anchor and this will be the size of the block so we're gonna call it it will be the same material and the same section now 
we can't do this so we come here and we make it from steel first thing it's very important we are going to create a new material isotropic we go back to change uh, the, uh, the, uh, the units to meter we go back to material we will start to create a new material we call it steel and modulus of elasticity is 2.1 e8 and gamma is 7 8 this is gonna be 1.5 Boson ratio and this is gonna be 7 8 and we say apply close we go to properties and we want to show 1d property and we're gonna do it as truss element as we can see here it's the spacing will be h3 meters uh, or let's say 2 meters it will be replicated and the section is uh, rounded and the diameter will be let's say 10 centimeters and we say ok and we call it anchor we say apply and cancel cancel now we created the material and the property for the anchor now we will start to extract this material from mesh we'll start to select the nodes here and we choose it anchor and we call it anchor and we say apply we can't extract it of course because we didn't choose the surrounded element and we say anchor and apply now it's created so this is the anchor now how can we do this we will learn something new today about the boundary condition which is called change property but before we do this i want to do to show you something else if we went to property and if you want to 1d here and you start to show this is the thickness and this is the anchor and if you want to 3d here you can see that this is one meter by half meter uh, we are like extruding this and this is the anchor and it will be replicated each two meters and the anchor here is and the sheet pile is, is replicating each one meter so you can see here that this uh, uh, this section is correct so if you want to like extrude your uh, section to see what you are doing this is a very good way to do this now i will just take this off and I will go back to change property so we will choose like at the beginning this material will be soil but after we install this anchor and we install this block this material should be concrete so if I choose uh, this one meter by one meter and I made the material here to be uh, material here I can go here and I create uh, a material and we call it block which the material is concrete and we say apply cancel we go to change properties and we choose our four elements and we uh, change it to block and we say boundary condition it's block and we say apply now when we start to add this boundary condition here this will be act as a block so now we have to add uh, interface element here so from mesh again we will go to interface and we will choose from truss and beam and we will go to our mesh and we will start to choose our anchor and the wizard will be here 0.7 and or we can make it 
as it is as it is still or 0.6 it's fine and we make it like anchor enter face and as well we will create a rigid link so we will create a rigid link here and we'll say apply cancel now we already created this so now this anchor we know it has like if we went back here this anchor there will be like a pretension force inside which def uh, which can be designed from the capacity of uh, the pile from the sheet pile so how this can happen at the beginning we will start to design as there is an as there is a support here and we start to get the reaction from this support and this will be uh, this will be like uh, the reaction from this support this will be the axial force will be in the anchor so we have to make a pretension force in the anchor with this force let's assume this force will be like 200 so we will go to static and slow blood we will go to the pre-stress and from 1d element which is the uh, anchor as we can see here and pretension type we have to check the pretension type and we will make it as 20 200, uh, 200 and we call it pretension force and we say apply so now this anchor has this pretension force inside it and we have its interface now we we'll go to analysis now we already improved our moment uh, our model a lot and it has a lot of element right now so first thing we have to do is to add the rigid link here from the interface as we can see here otherwise our model will not be okay so we added this then we will start to add our sheet file and we will take the rigid link but we still have our rigid link from the anchor then in the next stage we will start now we don't need this top we will start to add the anchor and the anchor interface and we deactivate what guys we deactivate the rigid link the other rigid link because we now have the interface don't keep the rigid link because there will be an error here and we say save and we add at the same time the boundary condition for the block and we say save next time we will remove this one and we say save like the uh, bottom strut and then dredging 2 and dredging 3 and close so let's revise this again to know exactly what we did so first thing we will start started our uh, model with all the soil together then I started to add the sheet pile at the beginning don't forget that we had a rigid link from the interface of the sheet pile so we had to do it to had add it in the initial stage and we had to add the rigid link from the anchor in the initial stage as well then we started to add the sheet pile and activate the interface for the sheet pile and deactivate the rigid link from the sheet pile then we started to add uh, to take the dredging one and we install the anchor and here we can see that we forgot something important which is the pre tension force so we go back here to dredging one and we edit and then add the pre tension force and save and close we go back to simulation to see what else we have we reach to add the pre tension force we added the anchor we removed the rigid link from the anchor and as we can see here in step number uh, three uh, the rigid link from the anchor it has been removed now and then uh, we added the pretension force we added the boundary con boundary condition from the plug uh, it has been added as well and now we added uh, this 
we take the dredging uh, we take this dredging uh, next dredging then the third dredging and then we add the load now our model is okay and even here we can remove this one and we can remove this one so uh, this is how gonna be like our model so we will start to run our model and we say solve and it will take some times and eventually we will have our model to be solved I will pause until I finish it as we can see we are reaching our conversions our model become extremely sophisticated now to simulate this real case of marines when we pull this uh, sheet bile with uh, an anchor and block <coughs> now we pass this and we are in this case now next stage life loot this is the last one now it's done and we can view our results we came here to life load we start to see the deformation so we can see this is the total deformation of the pile and let's see the deformed shape we can see here the effect of the the pile and the effect of the anchor let's see the pending moment to see if the anchor is connected to uh, if the anchor is connected to the sheet pile so we can see that the anchor didn't like the sheet pile didn't feel with uh, the anchor so let's see this is undeformed shape so let's go back and check our model again so we can see that all these nodes here like this node should be merged with this sheet pile so I am going to uh, anchor and sheet pile and we will see how many nodes here there should be one node they are two nodes and that's not correct they are not they are separated how can we do this we come here and we can merge them to see the difference so we merge find apply now how many nodes here it's one node so let's try to run this model again and see how well our uh, how is this gonna affect our problem you see even the number of errors has decreased so let's see how sophisticated we were so this is the total displacement we can see here that it's affected 
mit C. Moment. The pending moment here will take all of this and we just keep the sheet by. Wow, now we can see that this anchor has been influenced by this. So if we take the results, extract the results here from this one, and the results of the forces being forced. And from the sheet pile, select all, filter, table, and now we can see the direction, table, to see the effect if we have just one anchor. So let's see what is the effect if we added this one here. So we can see or let's keep it. So uh, select data, add here and here we can add this one and we say OK, OK. Now we can see that they are capturing the same effect here as we can see this is the effect of the anchor block but let's come here and see the reaction in x direction from the beam and we need here the anchor we can show the stress axial force we can see this is the axial force it should be increased up to 300 so let's imagine we take this solution up like we have to increase this pretension force to 300 we say OK and we will run this model again and we will show the results here of the moment We can see it started to affect a bit better. We can see here the axial force. Yeah, this is depending on the pretension force. This is the effect of our uh, plug. So let's see something here the effect of everything but in stresses to see if it will feel like we can see here that there is effect in the stresses here and let's do something else let's check something else here which is uh, we'll check nodes how many nodes at this point It's three nodes and I'm going to merge them here. And honestly, I'm going to increase 
this until the middle of this block or I'm going to extract something with no interface, rigid interface here to simulate that we have this anchor inside this block and this area is rigid so I'm going to extract here mesh 1D element and I'm going to choose this and those are the reference and I'm going to add them to the anchor I'm going to say apply and let's see how many nodes here three how many nodes here? Three. How many nodes here? One. Let's try to run this model again. and see how does this model feel with with the lateral displacement So oh. let's try to take this off and we run our model again. To see the effect of when we take this off, it was wrong to take it inside because actually we can see the effect here. Like it has its effect here, and let's see sigma x x. Like we can see this pulp here from pulling, and let's see von Mises stresses, and you can see everything here, even the strains. Like we can see here, like we were correct, and this is the strains. Like we can see, this is the strains is concentrated here, as we can see. So this is how we can model uh, the anchor block, and you we saw the effect of the interface and no interface, and this is really important when we are modeling our problem to be able to include the interface and how to include the rigid link and to include all the elements when you are trying to model your problem we, this is like 2d finite element analysis so how about if we are simulating this in 1d using uh, another software like msheet so we will see how we can model this problem over there and what would be the difference in the results but last thing to show here is the forces in the while as we can see here this is the forces in the while and the maximum and the minimum effect of the sheet pile As we can see here, this is a good reference where you can see the theoretical behind this. Rajadas, we can share this together. 
so I will stop the model here and I will go to uh, M sheet to start a new model and we can analyze this problem very fast to see uh, the difference in results now we are going to talk about how to model uh, using M sheet so M sheet is a very simple software so we can uh, to start to model this problem we will go to project and we will choose model we will model using k k node k uh, soil and then we will go to constructions we will choose our sheet pile and the section bottom level it will be until minus nine uh, if we remember and um, we'll say okay then we will go to the soil and soil surface and we will if we remember here from the last lecture that uh, we if we got our model here we have four models like uh, we use dimension from here so this is six uh, four meters then two meters then four then five four two four five so we go to M sheet and we go uh, surface name surface and we say okay and uh, layers uh, we leave layers now and we go to profile so for the profile we gonna choose uh, we are going to choose the top level to be zero then for the same material here we're gonna make it uh, top level is gonna be minus four then minus six then minus 10 then minus 15 and we're gonna say okay so this I will be like our model here and we will go here to soil again and layer and we will start to name our soil like top sand and we will open last time lecture to get the material so the first material was silty sand it was silty sand and the unsaturated uh, unit weight the unit weight was 18 total unit weight 18 cohesion we make this smaller so we can start to add cohesion and deflection angle so here the cohesion of all points uh, is gonna be like 0 or 3 and friction angle is 30 so cohesion will be 3 and friction angle is gonna be 30 and this is gonna be 0 and we're gonna keep everything as it is then we're gonna say add and we gonna call this as silty clay silty clay the material would be 16.5 and 700 and op uh, 20 0 1 20 and this is gonna be 0 and this is gonna be 
as we can see here one and we can say add and we call it clay sand and angle of 17.5 uh, 17.5 uh, this is 17.5 and the cohesion now we go back to the here 20 and um, uh 1525 1525 24 Okay. Now I can go back here to profile and this is the top layer, second layer, third layer. Force layer Here we can nick it. Layer profile. So yeah, we can delete it from here, and we can say okay. So it's gonna be like this exactly. Yes. So profile can layer third layer last layer and we can say okay amazing here we we'll call it sheet pile and stiffness action height 500 and we say okay then we go here to the water level there is no water level uh, we go to loading, uniform loading, loading left side, and uh, loading right side, and it will be like 10. Uh, load 10. and left side it's gonna be zero and we say okay so for water level right water level surface right surface left soil as we can see here spring support rigid uniform we can add uniform load here but at not this stage and we will go here to load support stages we're gonna go to manage so we rename this to initial and we add another one and we call it sheet pile uh, we can call it dredging d1 d2 and 
load live load and we say ok so at the beginning of water level there is no water level here ok water level will be minus 20 ok so there is no water level now so for initial for uh, the uh, for the uh, dredging one surface right surface left so we have to go to surface now we add another surface distance is minus four minus four and then from zero minus six say okay value not restricted increase in column one row two yeah i see so this surface i understand this we're gonna call it minus four and it's gonna be uh delete and at zero it's gonna be minus four it's gonna be uniform section i see so we go back to surface soil surface and we start to add it from zero to minus four we add another one at minus six and it's gonna be minus six i say okay Yeah, I see, I understand, sorry. And uh, add surface at zero, and it's gonna be zero. We say okay. So at the initial, it's gonna be this one left and right for the raging one Le uh, right, it's gonna be zero for the raging two, it's gonna be. Uh, minus six zero sorry and it's gonna be left minus six and for life load it's gonna be minus six and for the right it's gonna be zero and life load like this so initial d1 d2 life load so we will start to run the first run like this without supporting or without adding anything we will start to ask where to save this project we're gonna use stuff course english lecture 4 m sheet and can't liver and we say yes and he's saying that the calc uh, the sheet pile is not stable and which makes sense so we will ask him to design us do something really interesting so if we don't know what is the uh, length of the sheet pile we can always start from here to get the stability so we will go to calculation and we start with something called sheet pile length and we will always start 
uh, from length 12 up to 7 for this case and we will start so he's saying that uh, the only one is 12 uh, so how about we starting from uh, 10 up to 15 and we can ask him uh, to start so the best one here is is unstable so we can say if we add the depth of the pile is uh, 12 so mo mobilize the resistance is 58 and the maximum displacement is this and the, the positive moment is this one so this is another thing so we can start with uh, length of 12 so we're gonna start with the length is 12 and we say ok and we start to run our model and now we can go to results and show moment and displacement for everyone individually until we reach to this one the moment here is 500 and the moment here is and the shear force as we can see this is the distribution of the moment this is the distribution of the shear resistance now we can start to add a support here at uh, depth minus uh, 2 so if we went to support and we said strut so the level is minus 2 modulus 2.1 e7 uh, cross section is um, let's say 100 length is 1 meter angle is 0 and cross section is uh, let's say it is 0.1 like uh, uh, half meter by half meter 0.25 and we say okay uh, cells empty are not allowed buckling force sliding left let's give it a number and we say the name is strut and we say okay so here and ranging one will go to strut and we add this strut and we start to run our analysis to see what will be the moment so if we went to now we start to we can start to see that the moment now started to be different there is and as we can see here the value of the moment is as we can see here this is the value of the moment it's very high so once you add all these uh, values you can just start to see all your results and here is a strut force which we can use it to design the strut yeah, there is some mistake here if we went to d2 this strut should be exist and to uh, life fluid this strut should be exist and we will run this again we show results moment as we can see now that this is the moment and it's almost 200 something and this is 194 so we can see the results is really close and this is the shape of the uh, strut and this is the shape of the moment deformation we can add another strut to see the effect of the strut if we went to struts here so support so we add another strut here strut minus let's say strut um, minus 2 minus uh, uh, 4 
and this is start minus 2 it's going to be minus 4 2.1 e7 2.5 e minus 1 1 0 and it will be left and ok and at bridging 2 there will be another strut bridging 3 at uh, life load will be another strut and let's run and see so we can see here that at the initial stage this is the moment here from dredging 1 this is the moment here now after we adding dredging 2 we can see that the deformation is different as we can see here and this is the life load case and we can see the effect of the second strut we can just modify it a bit and we make this double the size and we can just run again we just increasing its stiffness and we go back here to see that it doesn't have too much effect so this is the effect if we want to give uh, overall stability but let's see something after we added that these two struts how uh, what would you think would be the uh, depths of the sheet pile if we went back to calculation and design the sheet pile and we will start from let's say 5 to 16 and we say start so so we'll start actually from let's say 7 so from 7 uh, here we can see that if the lens is this one so this is uh, using 90% of the mobilized resistance and this consider uh, this one is positive moment is much larger than this one so we can see that uh, when the when the, uh, the length is eight meters, this is the best for the distribution of the moment in both sides. So if we went here and we make this eight, and we run, we will find that the moment will be distributed in the positive and the negative direction will be better. We can see here this is dredging one. This is dredging 2 and we even can see that the results is almost close so the moment here is 50 the moment here is almost uh, like the moment here is like 30 91 and 34 from our excel uh, here the moment is 41 uh, say 43 almost a close and here it's um, uh, 94 this one is 91 they are almost close so this is from two supports let's imagine we have one support so now we compared the results of moment and even the struts value are almost the same so when we compared, the, uh, compared these values we found that uh, the mo moments ratios are almost uh, typical in both sides uh, that's why uh, we can depend on finite element which give us more representative results and we can use it a lot in different calculations so let's try one last thing if we have just one strut to see the different in results as we can see here let's run our model close and see calculation 
but before this we will go to design the length of the bile and let's see so when the it's 8 we can find uh, that 8 meter how about we increase it to 16 to see so 8 we just seeking which values are close to each other um, they are not so close so let's try 9 um, like I think 8 is much better so the results here if we run this uh, model we can see that results in the live fluid is almost uh, 135 from our uh, finite element this was the model Uh, 152 this one 135 almost the same and here it's 46 uh, 71 so we can say that uh, we can start our modeling with uh, M sheet and we can get the dimension of the bile the length of the bile and we can use the, the preliminary uh, design uh, of uh, our pile here of our sheet pile here and we can use it uh, in the finite element analysis to recap all what we talk about in this lecture we started with talking about the interface and we understood what is the interface is and how we can include it in different uh, situations and for sheet bios and we started to see the difference or the effect of the interface on the uh, straining actions in the sheet pile like at the moment has increased uh, in so either it was cantilever case or uh, sheet uh, like uh, single strut or double strut and then we will to uh, we soon we talked about uh, changing the struts uh, from uh, boundary condition uh, to be simulated as um, <laughs> Uh, anchor block and we understood the, what uh, how we can figure out what is the length of the anchor and we said it should be out of the failure zone of the active and passive air pressure and uh, there will be like pre-stressed force inside the anchor this pre-stressed force we can calculate it from uh, the preliminary uh, design like we can say the uh, pre-stress force here it would be like almost 200 and uh, then we have to add interface then after we have to add interface don't forget when we add the interface we include some another element called rigid link and we understood that the rigid link we use it for yeah substituting uh, the interface uh, element place when we don't uh, consider interface and we remove it we, after we add the structure element and its interface so we deactivate the rigid link and when we added the interface for uh, then we for the concrete uh, block we found that it has this passive effect when we pulling it and uh, then we started to simulate uh, its uh, uh, run this analysis and we compare the result of the shape pile with uh, other cases we found they are almost identical uh, and uh, this is simulate the real behavior of the sheet uh, pile uh, in marines finally we ended this lecture with, uh, with using uh, M sheet as a, a preliminary uh, software we can use it to calculate the different uh, we can calculate it uh, use it to calculate the different uh, parameters for the sheet bile uh, before going to finite element uh, it's a very easy software where we can just add the uh, soil uh, stratification and its parameter and we can define the sheet by length and we can start to run analysis it has a very good feature which is like we can design uh, the length of the bile and we can get the uh, can get to a point where the moment in the both side almost close to each other which will save us a lot when we are designing our uh, section later so the moment decreased because it is distributed in both side 
in, in both sides. Then, depending on this uh, lens, we can just uh, we can just do another thing, which is uh, finding this lens, and we go to finite element and we model the whole problem. One last feature about this program, uh, we will talk more about the slope stability when to come to the lecture about the slope stability, but here we can go to calculation about overall stability. So if we uh, saw here, here we can see also the stresses in the diagrams like the air pressure and so on and we can also uh, we can also do calculate uh, see calculations about uh, stress charts here to see the maximum and the minimum as we can see this is the stress distribution all this is the results we can see it in the software instead of calculating the active and the passive air pressure uh, we can do this uh, here uh, so this uh, software has like uh, nice features we can use it uh, very quickly and We can uh, just modify the language and all this stuff to serve our uh, project. You can add all the properties, view input file, and you can uh, check vertical balance. And we can, if we just did C5 soil, we can say yes. And at this time, if we started the calculation here and we set close the results here, we can see as well here the report section. He can create us a report with every information we need with the construction stages, and he can give you the soil stratification and uh, the horizontal pressure stresses all the results uh, it can be done here so uh, this uh, results is uh, this is very uh, good software has even a library and we can check calculate here everything and that's why this uh, software can be very efficient we will end this lecture at this point and in the next lecture, we will talk about new topic. See you guys in the next lecture. Thank you.